Hi everybody, Sandra Duran Wilson here and welcome to this week's Mixed Media Soul Sparks. Today I want to share with you a particular product that I've used and I did some experiments with it in my book on acrylic painting for encaustic effects and I really liked some of the effects I got with it creating like an instant wax look. And this is the product, it's called, uh, it's an acetate alternative, Duralar. It's the matte film, and it's made by Graphics. And I'll be showing you another uh, product from them in a couple of weeks. But this has got a lot of possibilities. So when you pull it out, you can see that it has a white look to it. But when I put it down, right against something, it becomes like a ghosting film, kind of like a vellum, so to speak. Call it the acetate alternative. Now, you can do a lot of things with this. You can draw on it, paint on it, print it, stamp it, just about anything you can do. And it doesn't tend to buckle. So the first thing I want to share with you is, let me move this out of the way. This is a piece, I already stamped it or painted it with the stencil on this side. But look at what it looks like on the other side. It's not quite so bright. It's not as in your face. It feels like it has this little hint of wax over it. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take the same stencil and I'm going to create like an offset of it. Meaning I'm going to move it off slightly from the orig original place where I painted it. And I'm going to be using uh, this color. I love this color. It's similar to uh, Thalo Turquoise. This is uh, Australian company, Matisse, and it's called Southern Ocean Blue. And I'm just going to take my stamp. I just moved it, so. Make sure it's loaded up well. So I might just try and tape this so I don't do that again. Just a little tiny bit will work. And what I'm going to do is just come in here. I don't even have to go over the entire area, but I'm covering up the bit of white there. So it's going to create like a shadow effect. I think I'm going to add a little more paint. So I keep turning the uh, sponge so I don't get a hard edge. And let's take a look. It's very similar in color, but you can see the, the shadow of it. Put this white behind it. Now when I flip it over, I start to see the differences a little more. So now what I want to do is I want to add another layer to it and I'm going to move my stencil the other way. And I'm just going to try and go along this edge. And again, I'm going to tape it down. You know, getting tape off with gloves on, it's not the easiest thing. We'll see if that works. And I'm, what I'm looking for is just a bit of an edge. 
and you can see it where it's white there. And I'm going to use this tip of my sponge and I'm going to mix a little bit of white. No, that's not the white I wanted. This is a zinc white. Let's just try it with the yellow and see what happens. So here, I'm just going over this edge. I just want to create a, a highlight over here. Because the yellow is pretty transparent, when I get it over the other colors, it's not going to show up quite as much. Just try a little here, not quite as much. And then I'm just using my finger to wipe a lot of it off. And let's see what that looks like. Oops. Okay, now we can see these different layers that we're getting. And if I flip it over, you see how diffused it is. And I'm not worried about this because I want to show you the next thing I'm going to do with it, which is cut it up. So if I took this and I wanted to add it to this painting to kind of cover up this area that's kind of muddy. But then I'd have that edge there. So rather than putting the entire piece onto there, I'm going to cut out this side. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I might just kind of go around like this. So it's just not a, a hard edge, but I'm also not cutting out every individual leaf. I kind of call this like creating a wax element. And I'll just do it like this just to show you the difference. So now when I go to adhere this, I'm going to have this edge coming along here. I could just trim this off, you know, leave it this way, or I could trim it down again. I could even move it around, play with the idea. And I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll trim this part off and then adhere this, and I'm going to show you how to adhere it using a gel. So let me show you a different one. Now here's a piece that I ran through the laser printer. And this is just an image that I took uh, in the garden and played with it in a photo app and then made it black and white. So I've got this pattern. I even started playing with that idea. I didn't like it so much, but I could do a little color on the back of this. Let's just take it's my sponge. See which side I like it better. So if I'm going for more of a, a wax look, I just want just a hint of color. And I want the more waxy side to be the front. But do you see how thin this paint layer is? I could decide either way. Maybe I use it this way, maybe I use it this way. It's got a different look. I could even spray a little bit of alcohol on here to create the openings that you get from the acrylic moving away from the alcohol. And when I flip it over, I can start to see that pattern. Now what I would do is I would let that dry and then I would adhere it using soft gel 
probably a soft gel matte, but that's going to make it really diffused. So I think what I would do is use a soft gel semi-gloss rather than a matte. I'm not going to show you how to glue that down. I've showed you gluing with the uh, gel many different videos. This one has the entire sheet of Duralar glued on to a panel. So the background panel had paint on it. Then I added some paint on the, the Duralar, glued it on, and then I came back on the surface here and added more. So there's really like three layers. And that's really what gives a painting that look of encaustic, is those layers. I could come back in, this is a stencil I had used, but I just want to come in here and add some of these lines. And let's see, I wanted to add a red to this one. This is a quinacridone red, which tends to be more in the blue side. And let me just get this situated. My paint's a little too wet, so it might have some bleeding going underneath the stencil. Let's see. Oh, it's not too bad. So now this layer is really sitting on the surface. So I've got layers over this layer, which is in the front. And when that dries, I can come back in and do an offset layer, like I did, like I showed you with the leaf one, and just keep building these layers up. So again, that's with the whole sheet adhered to the board. Here's another one that has just the background, just some background pieces I was playing around with. This is the stencil I had used here to do a stencil erase. That's in one of the earlier videos. But let's say if I wanted to take this and I was going to adhere this whole piece onto this background. Now I had lined this up before. I'm going to come back in here and use, uh, let's use this yellow since I have it here. And I might even try some of this zinc white. I'm not sure. Zinc white is called a mixing white. It oops, tends to be more transparent. This has been sitting around for a while. So what the heck, let's just see what it does. There we go. So it doesn't make it the chalky white, but it lightens it somewhat. I'm just going to hold this in place and start to stamp. Well, stamp, go through the stencil with my cosmetic sponge. That's not really stamping. But I think you know what I meant. Now let me show you what I'm doing over here. Rather than having a hard edge there, I'm just going to fade it out. When I take this off of here, oops, I did have it taped down. Let me get this white paper in so you can see it. Now, what I was talking about fading it out, see how it was a hard edge right there? I'm just going to take my finger while the paint is still wet and smear it out. Here I might even just go out like that. Anything to break up that edge so it's not going to look like, oh, you have a square edge there. This is one where I was drawing on it. So now let's pretend this is dry.
this is the hard part is figuring out, okay, which way. So now that this is dry, I could cut this out, or I think originally the way I had it was, nope, that's not it. This is the hard part, is figuring out which way it goes. Because I really wanted this to be on the, there we go. This is the way I wanted it. So now, you see how it's slightly offset? If I cut this to shape, then I would just adhere this whole piece down, and that's going to give me another layer. I could come back in with the stencil, same stencil, yet again, and layer it and build up these faux encaustic layers. Now let's say I get this adhered, and it's going to take it a while to dry because you've got a panel and you've got a piece of vellum, pretty much. So just make sure that you put a thin layer of the gel and you let it dry. Let me just show you that really quick, what I mean by a thin layer. Now this is gloss, and I just want to try this to see how much this is going to change under here, just so I can give you a definitive answer of whether you want to use the satin or the matte or the gloss. And I'm thinking for my taste of how I like the wax to look, that this gloss might work. I know on the other piece I had used a satin so let's just take this. And then I want to make sure that I get any air bubbles out. Now, I don't have it lined up perfectly. I might do that off camera and, and get it lined up again. But the thing you're going to want to do is make sure there's no air bubbles. And you're going to have to give this time to dry. It could take it a couple of days to really dry, and even longer to adhere. But if I put a thick layer of matte, it's going to diffuse my background too much. So I would suggest going with the gloss. And again, you can see about what the thickness is. It's not very thick. I think... This is the way I had it. I just wanted to make sure I had enough. I'll play with it later. So anyway, that's what uh, we're going to be working with the, um, the mat. You can put the whole sheet on. You can cut out shapes, make what I call wax elements, and use the medium to, or the gel to adhere it. So thanks for joining me this week. See the notes that come along with this, and I'll have more information for you there. See you next week. Join the Creative Awakening community on Facebook, where you'll be able to post your art, connect with other creatives around the world, and ask questions. Use the hashtag Mixed Media Soul Sparks when posting your work on social media. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next week.